Hi folks, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Today we're going to talk about pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer is a tough topic to talk about, but we're uh, fortunate to have Dr. Patel. Dr. Patel uh, is uh, one of our uh, colleagues here and has had an extra year of training where he focused on pancreas. Today we're going to talk about what's the pancreas, how does pancreatic cancer present, in other words, what do we look for, how can we prevent it, and what are the tests that we have available. So, uh, Suhag, welcome. Uh, can you talk a little bit about this in terms of what's the pancreas, where does it sit, how does pancreatic cancer present? Sure, sure. Thank you for having me, Dr. Ravi. So, pancreas is actually, it's a gland, large gland that sits behind the stomach in the abdomen. It makes digestive enzymes and uh, certain hormones. The digestive enzymes, they drain through a duct called pancreatic duct that runs in, through the center of the pancreas and drains in the small intestine. And uh, the hormones, they are released into the bloodstream directly. So twofold function. Yeah. Helps in digestion, helps with hormones too. Exactly, yeah. and those hormones help us maintain or balance the uh, glucose levels in the body. Blo yes. So. so in terms of pancreatic cancer then, uh, how many cases in the US, how often uh, do we find it? Uh, can we find it uh, before it yeah. presents? So uh, actually, if you look at the 2020 data for pancreatic cancer, there, there are going to be about 57,000 cases in the United States of pancreatic cancer in this year. And 47,000 deaths will be because of pancreatic cancer. Um, if you look at the American Cancer Society data, uh, it's the third most common cause of cancer death. And about 8% of cancer death will be because of pancreatic cancer. Um, maximum will be by the lung cancer, then the colon cancer, and uh, will be followed by pancreatic cancer. The, what are the main, uh, uh, what puts people at risk for pancreatic cancer? So is, there, is it all hereditary? Is there something that yeah. our patients can do? Very good question, actually. And this is very pertinent in terms of pancreatic cancer. Uh, there are certain risk factors, we call them risk factors, which puts somebody at risk of developing pancreatic cancer. There are certain risk factors which are modifiable, which means those can be changed by certain lifestyle changes or certain you know uh, me uh, measures, those can be changed. There are certain non-modifiable risk factors. And then there are certain other factors, which I think they are still under study and some studies have shown some risk, but we still don't have strong uh, uh, data. Mm -hmm. So there are the modifiable risk factors. The number one important risk factor is actually smoking. Yeah. Uh, as doctors, we always like to say that smoking is injurious to health, but when it comes to pancreas, it's, it's one of the most important risk factors. Yeah. Uh, the smokers are twice at higher risk of developing pancreatic cancer than compared to non-smokers. Mm -hmm. If you look at the data, about 25% of uh, pancreatic cancers are found in people who smoke. Then there are some other uh, modifi modifiable risk factors as well, like uh, being overweight, having diabetes, having chronic pancreatitis, or um, having a certain uh, exposure to certain chemicals. That also uh, causes pancreatic cancer. There are certain non-modifiable risk factors, um, like if you have family history of pancreatic cancer, if you have certain hereditary syndromes mm -hmm. that can put you at developing pancreatic cancer. Um, age, gender, race, they also play part. Um, you know, those are not, you, you cannot modify those factors. Uh, then there are certain other other factors with no, uh, uh, I mean, some studies showing there is some risk, and those could be diet, your physical inactivity, coffee, alcohol, those kind of factors are mm -hmm. uh, implicated. So the big things then are, are avoiding smoking exactly. and exercising and trying to stay at the leanest weight possible. Exactly. Okay. What symptoms then, If what should people be, you know, is there specific symptoms? Are there any uh, things that our patients should be looking for? So pancreatic cancer can present in a variety of ways. And many times actually, uh, the real bad thing about pancreatic cancer is it could be completely asymptomatic. You may yeah. not have any symptoms until it has advanced or, or spread in the body. But then there are some other uh, symptoms that we look for. There is unintentional weight loss, nausea, vomiting, uh, abdominal pain, mainly in the upper abdomen. Sometimes it may radiate to your back. Mm -hmm. uh, you may develop diarrhea mm -hmm. with a greasy looking floaty stool. Mm -hmm. um, you may also have uh, a tr a trouble controlling the diabetes. If you are well controlled and all of a sudden if you start losing uh, control of your sugar levels, control, exactly. yeah, yeah. or if there is a new onset diabetes, those are the risk factors that, uh, I mean the symptoms that you should look for. Yeah. yeah. 
sometimes all over the board, but you have to yeah. be careful. Yeah. yeah. So what are the tests? How do we find that when we suspect that in our practice? Yeah. What are we doing? So there are certain tests that we do. There are some blood tests. There are some imaging studies, and uh, there, then all, of course you know you also may consider doing a biopsy. So when it comes to blood tests, we do some liver function test, uh, pancreatic test, and uh, look for tumor markers. These are blood tests. These are the yep. blood tests. Yep. We also look for imaging studies like ultrasound. Uh, depending upon uh, the presentation, we may decide about getting a specific CT scan, which is what we call pancreatic protocol CT scan, mm -hmm. which focuses on the pancreatic imaging or the MRI mm -hmm. uh, studies. Mm -hmm. There are endoscopic uh, studies as well. We do endoscopic ultrasound, and there is a study called ERCP. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, those can be useful as well. Yeah, um, yeah. You uh, you spent an extra year uh, yeah. training on endoscopic ultrasound and uh, ERCP. Can you just, in general terms, speak about that? Uh, uh, what do we use that sure. for? So endoscopic ultrasound, it's kind of an ultrasound, but it is done via endoscopy. So when we we pass the camera through the mouth down into the stomach and small intestine, and that endoscope has an ultrasound probe at the end. Because the pancreas is right behind the stomach, right. we get really good images from because there. Because you get really up close. Exactly. Yeah. So we, we get to take a good look and then if needed, we can actually pass a tiny needle through that scope into the pancreas and take some uh, sampling. Samples, yeah. And that helps us diagnose stage and decide, you know, if there are any lymph nodes around it, if it has spread into nearby organs and those kind of things. So. Thank you, folks, for joining us today. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And thank you, Suhag, for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Avi. Thanks for having me.